So in this video, we're going to talk about all the different types of real numbers that exist. So look at this circle and imagine that inside the circle we can fit all the different types of numbers that you've ever seen. And these are all called real numbers. We call this group, uh, this space, a set. A set is a math term for a group of objects. It could be anything. It could be a group of donuts, a group of people. But in this case, it's this set is a group of numbers called the real numbers. And our first type of real number is the one that you learned first in school, and they're called counting numbers or natural numbers. Here they are right here. Usually, um, you'll see them with brackets like this, which indicate that we're looking at a set or a group. And this set or group goes from 1 up to 2 and so forth, up by 1s. When we get to 8, the next counting number or natural number is 9, and then 10, and then not 10.5 or 10.6, but 11. Counting numbers are basically whole numbers above 0. They do not include fractions or negative numbers. Sometimes people refer to them uh, as starting at 0, but we will, will refer to counting numbers or natural numbers as starting at 1. So in our universe, in our group of real numbers, we have our first group and that's natural numbers. Now the next group of numbers that we're going to talk about are whole numbers. Uh, essentially they are the same as counting numbers with one exception. They don't start at one, they start at zero. Zero is a whole number. So when we refer to whole numbers we're really saying zero and 1, and 2, and 3, and so forth. The difference being with counting numbers, we don't include 0. So if we go back to our group of real numbers, we have natural numbers, and then we have whole numbers, which also includes the number 0. So it's, picture this really small group of numbers right here. Now here, in this larger circle, we say this is whole numbers. So whole numbers actually include all the natural numbers and one other, which is zero. So our next group of numbers are integers. And in fact, they're very similar to whole numbers and natural numbers, which have zero, one, two, and three. But also, we include um, negative whole numbers. So not only do integers include zero, one, two, three, and so forth, but they include their negative values. And this goes on forever in either direction. A shortcut for the uh, word integer in math is this symbol. Looks like a Z. That is for integers. Notice I did not say integer, which many people say because of this G. It's in fact integer. So integers are whole numbers uh, that are positive and negative and zero. Don't forget that zero is an integer. Our natural numbers were the first group we talked about. They're all real numbers and I'll abbreviate at nat for natural. And then we have all those natural numbers and zero, which are whole numbers. So we have all of our whole numbers and our nat natural numbers, and then we have integers, which include all the whole numbers and natural numbers and negative whole numbers. So I'll put the Z here for integers. And then we go to our next group, of numbers which are rational numbers. Rational numbers it's basically any number that can be written as a fraction where the integer integers are numerators and denominators. So let's say we have a fraction like 5 over 2. 5 and 2 are both integers. So this fraction is a rational number. The number 10. Well 10 can be also written as 10 over 1, right? 10 divided by 1 is still 10. 10 is an integer, 1 is an integer, so 10 over 1 is also a rational number. In decimal form, if you see anything that has some kind of a pattern, even if it's a weird pattern, we write 3, 2, 3, this is a repeating pattern, so we repeat over and over again. This is, in fact, a rational number. You could try it, it would be this fraction. So these are rational decimals. Also an example of a rational decimal is one 
that has some kind of ending. So even if it doesn't have a pattern, if at some point it stops or terminates, we call a decimal a rational decimal. And if we go back to our universe here of real numbers, we have our natural whole numbers, int integer numbers, those are all rational. And rational numbers also include fractions. So we can include all these groups in the rational universe, plus this little extra bit which says that we're also including different types of numbers. Not to say that there are more rational numbers or integers and whole numbers than the other, just that all the integers and whole numbers and, and natural numbers are also rational. Our last group is called irrational, and this is uh, certainly more confusing than the other groups. Uh, the most famous example of an irrational number is pi. Um, square root numbers like square root of 2 or 3, not 4 because the square root of 4 is just 2. Square root of 5, that's irrational. The square root of any number that's a whole number, if you're finding that that square root is a decimal, it's going to be irrational. You can do a quick test, like let's say you have the square root of 101. Well, at first glance you might be feeling that it's hard to tell if this is rational or, or irrational, but remember that the square root of 100 is 10, since 10 times 10 is 100. So then you realize, well, 11 times 11 is not 101, 11 times 11, well, that's 121. So there's no whole number times itself that gives you 101. Something This equals something between 10 and 11. So if you have a whole number, like 101, and you're trying to find the square root of it, and you realize it's between two whole numbers, you can say that this is irrational. What is irrational? It's a number that can't be written as a fraction of an integer over another. As a decimal, you would see something that never has an ending and never has any kind of repeating pattern in it. Um, so that's what irrational numbers look like. And in fact, we can think about this on a number line. Um, on this top number line, we're including 0 and 1 and 2 and 3. Well, that's our whole numbers. If we just started at 1, that would be natural numbers. Now if we take the number line and expand it in both directions, we have integers. And then if we start to include all the numbers between, we get a number line with rational numbers as well. And also on that number line are irrational numbers too. For example, the square root of 2 is somewhere in here. So the more in depth you examine the number line, the more you look at it, the more you examine it, the more types of numbers you will see. These are all real numbers. Add all these numbers <clears throat> into the real number set. We have irrational numbers, integers, whole numbers, natural numbers, and then we can label the rest of the space in here for the irrational numbers. Put them all together and we have all the real numbers you'll ever encounter in our class.